Dr. Joya is the host of Pop Goes the Vet that is coming to National Geographic Wild on January 1st. It's also going to be streaming on Disney Plus as well, too. Uh, Dr. Joya, thank you so much for joining me today. Talk to me a little bit about a veterinary dermatologist and what, uh, what you actually do. Yeah, so it's kind of an unknown specialty, right? Um, I'm a veterinary dermatologist, which means that I did a little bit of extra training outside of vet school in order to be board certified in dermatology. So I treat all things skin, um, nails, as well as ear disease, and it's a lot of fun. Sometimes it's a lot of gross, but it, it's definitely um, something that I, I look forward to showing you. So growing up, Gremlins was one of my favorite movies, and you had a pet named Gizmo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and your dog yes. had so, some skin conditions, and I think, is that where you got this first, you know, love as far as taking care of animals in this way? Yes, absolutely. Um, she had terrible skin. Uh, she was actually my replacement when I went to college. My dad got my sister a dog, and um, she was just beyond our capability to take care of locally in Dayton, Ohio. So when I was accepted to Cornell and moved up there, I took her with me, and the first service I went to was the dermatology service, and they made a huge transformation in her skin, and it, it was like they gave me my dog back. You know, she was able to live along and happy life after that. And I knew that I wanted to do that for my patients. As far as skin conditions of what we're going to see on, on this show, are these pretty typical things that we see with animals or are these ex extraordinary conditions that they're facing? Um, I think that you're going to see all of it really. Um, so we see the typical things can be things like allergic skin disease. Um, that's pretty common in dogs and cats, especially in my part of the country. I live in the Ohio Valley. Um, we also will treat more severe autoimmune skin diseases. These are diseases that adversely affect the animal's lives because they have a very poor quality of life when they have these types of lesions where their skin is sometimes crusting and sometimes falling off, really, literally. And um, I also treat um, forms of skin cancer, lumps and bumps, as well as ear disease. So you'll see the whole gamut of it on the show. And especially now during the holidays, a lot of people might be looking to adopt a pet or bring a new pet into the home. Is there anything that people should look for or look for as far as skin conditions to make sure that they're treating their, their pets the, uh, the right way? Yeah, I mean, when you adopt a pet, you're never going to know in advance whether it's going to have a skin problem. Um, there are certain breeds that are a little more prone to that. Uh, and I think if you do a little research in advance, and know that you might be adopting a dog that could have <laughs> allergic skin disease. Um, sometimes setting yourself up in advance with some pet insurance may help because it, it can be a very um, long condition, like lifelong treatment is usually required with that. So um, just knowing what you're getting into, like for instance, English bulldogs will require a lot of skin care up front because they have all these folds and crevices that need to be cleaned and wiped out. And so you know, you got to be prepared for that. And, um, but other than that, I think, you know, just making sure that their skin looks normal, that their hair is not falling out. And if you start to see um, changes like that, or a dog that's chewing or licking or biting itself, then that may indicate that there's some problems and you need to take them into the vet. Is there anything that we should look, uh, as, you know, you're from Dayton, Ohio, we're in the Chicagoland area. Obviously the Midwest has a lot of yeah. cold conditions and icy weather. Anything that we should do to use as preventative care for our pets uh, this winter? So in the winter, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the biggest thing is just protecting them from harsh, harsh weather. I mean, most of our pets are, are, are babies. They live inside our homes. Letting them stay outside for long periods of time could lead to, you know, frostbite. Um, that's pretty rare, and it would be an animal that would be confined to the outdoors for long periods of time. So as long as we, you know, love on them and keep them, you know, within our, our homes, usually they'll be okay in the winter. And the final thing I want to ask you, pet names. Some of the ones I've heard on the show so far are so adorable. Do you have favorite pet names as far as people like when they come in, it just like, it just touches you. I mean, you had Gizmo gr growing up, um, but let's talk a little <laughs> bit about pet names and just how, what that means to people. I love this question. So I am a fan of, you know, just unique, funny animal names. I'd prefer that over, you know, naming your dog Karen or Sarah or <laughs> a human name. Cause I think it's confusing. Like if my dog's name was Joya, I mean, who are we talking about? Is it the dog or is it the person? So um, like I have a dog named Magic and a cat named Donut. And, um, you know, I just love names like that. My last cat was named Cappuccino. Maybe it's a food thing. Maybe I like food names. Yeah, Waffles I'm getting, I'm getting hungry right now. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I love those kind of whimsical names, like those things just, you know, we had a Snuggles on the show, you know, those are just the cutest little names. And you, it's a pet, so you can name it a, you know, a, a, a petsy name. <laughs> oh, exactly. And Donuts and Cappuccino, I mean, what, what a better way to uh, to call off that in the morning for uh, for your pets. Uh, Dr. Joy, thank you so much for, for your time today. January 1st, National Geographic Wild, and then streaming on Disney Plus on January 5th. 